And now I get to talk about my favorite topic, young, hot Bruce Willis, killing terrorists. Hello, friends! Merry Christmas and July again! If you've made it all the way through the previous two videos and you are here to watch this third video on day three of our Holidays with Jane um, Christmas in July event, you are a saint and my new favorite person. Um, make sure to, if you haven't watched them, to check out the videos where I talk about gender flipping Mansfield Park and my story, It's a Wonderful Latte, um, and then inventing Mansfield Perk, um, which I think we all agree should exist. So if anybody um, who has a, a lot of money lying around and wants to invest in a coffee shop, a Jane Austen related coffee shop, please see me um, because I will be your best customer. And then this video is going to be all about Die Hard and It's a Wonderful Life, um, the movies that I plagiarized reference. And it's a wonderful latte. So enjoy and Merry Christmas in July. Um, so for the last topic, um, I am also equally vocal about how much I love Die Hard um, as I am about how much I do not love Mansfield Park. <laughs> So, um, because I was doing a Christmas story, I thought this is the perfect opportunity to incorporate my favorite Christmas movies because I live on references. If you're going to like hang out with me for an hour, you're going to hear no less than 10 movie or book references in that hour. Um, so I also am kind of known for adding those references to my stories because, um, those are the kind of characters I write, the kind that are going to like quote the Princess Bride at you. So because I also am going to quote the Princess Bride at you. I talked about deciding to gender flip Mansfield Park because it made it easier to write, um, putting it in Mansfield Perk because it made it easier to write. Um, spoiler alert, it was not easy to write. This is one of the hardest stories I've ever written and um, I think I was afraid of letting all my fellow authors down and my story was like only partly written and they're starting to turn in stories to me that are like awesome and about 6,000 words longer than I was anticipating my story to be. So I I had some um, additional pressure to like up my game and make this a great story. So um, that is when the... Um, the frame tale, because I also love metafiction, kind of came in of Jane Austen being kind of like the Clarence character in It's a Wonderful Life and being sent to Earth to um, help Evie realize that she really is living Mansfield Park, that she really is Edmund in a skirt, as she realizes near the end. And... Um, that she's missing Frank, who's right in front of her face, um, just completely missing it. So um, she is Jane, um, or the Jane-jol, as Evie and her cousin Izzy call her, um, is sent to Mansfield Park in Los Angeles by Samuel Clemens, by Mark Twain. And I thought that was kind of fun because um, of Mark Twain's very famous commentaries about Jane Austen. Um, and Jane references those to him in the story. So what I decided to do was kind of create that frame tale of It's a Wonderful Life um, around the Mansfield Perk story so that um, we kind of got a little bit of ridiculous, magical elements. Um, my fellow authors know that sometimes it's really hard for me to write straight modern fiction that doesn't have a magical element. So what I did is I let myself be as ridiculous as possible in this story and have an angel Jane Austen and Samuel Clemens and um, tons of references everywhere. So this is a Christmas story. So there's your It's a Wonderful Life references. But this is a Christmas story and it's set in Los Angeles as um all most all of my stories are um, and you can't have a Christmas story set in Los Angeles and not talk about Die Hard because Die Hard is to me the quintessential LA movie and the best Christmas movie ever and even though it was released in the summer it was like a Christmas in July event just like we're having um, 
it is my favorite Christmas movie and if you don't think it's a Christmas movie you can fight me because I will die on this hill so I do have the references throughout the story um, of Die Hard and actually that's when Frank became an Asian character um, I didn't have any concept of who Frank was other than that his name was Frank because that was the feminine of Franny for me so um, and then all of a sudden he walked in and he was Frank Nakatomi um, and that's when I was just like oh I'm gonna be ridiculous and it's gonna be like my favorite like diehard reference Lollapalooza and it's gonna be great so um Anyway, I'm totally off track here. <laughs> Die Hard to me is one of the best Christmas movies because it encompasses everything that Christmas is about, which is wanting to be with your family, um, resolving your family issues for Christmas, for the holidays, um, and killing people. So, killing terrorists. Um, the, the other thing that makes Die Hard the best movie, um, or Christmas movie in my opinion, um, two things. Young, hot Bruce Willis. I mean, really, like, let's just stop the video there. I'm kidding, I said two things. So, young, hot Bruce Willis, obviously, and Hans Gruber, played by young, hot Alan Rickman. And this is like movie magic. If you could bottle the combination of young hot Bruce Willis and young hot Alan Rickman together on screen, although they're only on screen together for a very short amount of time, um, you would have a blockbuster every week. The other thing um, I think that makes it such a great movie and why I like it is um, the paradoxes. And part of why I love paradoxes is I am from Los Angeles and... Um, Right now, my college California lit teachers are like, oh, she's talking about paradoxes in California and Southern California literature. This is so exciting for us. She listened in class. But that's part of why I love LA. Um, it is truly the land of paradoxes, and that's why a Christmas movie in LA is so awesome because when you think Christmas movie, you think Rocky Mountain Christmas, you think... Um, snow and lights and hot cocoa and Santa Claus and what we have in um, Die Hard is absolutely none of those things. We have Bruce Willis killing terrorists in a high rise in Los Angeles and yet it works because um, at the core of the film is what Christmas is really all about and that is um, being with your family, being with your friends, making sacrifices for your family and friends. Um, it's just a warm holiday feel-good movie with lots of blood and explosions. So anyway, really at the core of the story, I think It's a Wonderful Life and Die Hard are very similar movies because they are about the main character um, finding out, digging deep and finding out who they really are, um, finding out what's important to them um, in time for those holidays, and then ultimately spending those holidays with their family. So. To me, they're very similar stories, and it's a similar story to It's a Wonderful Latte because Evie is clueless, and she doesn't really know who she is. She's completely blinded to who she really is and to who's really important to her, um, and it takes a visitation from her version of Clarence, um, Heavenly Jane Austen, to open her eyes to what's important to her in time for Christmas. Um, and the best thing is that even though Evie realizes that she is Edmund Bertram and Isker and she is living out Mansfield Park, which is her also her least favorite Jane Austen novel, it doesn't make her hate Mansfield Park any less, realizing that the story is happening again to her. Um, but she is able to take the steps to change that story um, and ultimately, I think um, that's what I like writing about is people who realize that they can change their story. Um, so anyways, that's my spiel about It's a Wonderful Latte. And I actually did, um, I won't say I enjoyed writing it because it was really hard to write, but I enjoyed reading it after I had written it. Um, and I hope that you, if you have read it, um, enjoyed it. And Merry Christmas, even though it's July.